Hello everyone! In this video we are going to talk about compound inequalities and specifically the OR statements when we have compound inequalities. Before we do some examples of those types of inequalities to solve, I want to talk a little bit about these words intersection and union because you'll hear those come up when we're talking about these compound inequalities. So the intersection is um, and if we look at this Venn diagram over here, you can kind of see maybe a visual of what's happening. So this is set A that has one, two, three, six, and seven in it. And then set B has three, four, seven, and five in it. And so the intersection of those two is the ones that they share in common, right? The overlap of that. So let's define this and put this down as elements, both sets have in common. And so sometimes we think of that as where they overlap. Okay. And when we're dealing with the intersection, we sometimes will see this symbol meaning intersection. If I said what is A intersect B, that means it would be the two elements that they share in common, so it would be 3 and 7. So that would be our intersection. Um, the union is all of the elements in both sets. So 1, 2, 6, 3, 7, 4, 5, all of the elements in both sets. Okay, so let's write that down. So all elements in both sets. And then the symbol that we'll use for union is this right side up U. Okay. And another thing that we're going to get to that I want to bring up is that when we have an OR statement, like we're dealing with in this first part, that means that we want the union. So whenever you have an OR statement, let me write that underneath here, okay, these OR statements, then you want the union, or all of the elements in both sets where if you have the if you have an and statement which we're going to deal with in the next video then you want the intersection or where those overlap okay all right so let's look at some examples now um, that might be helpful on this so if we have something like this so we're asked to solve graph and write the answer in interval notation And so hopefully you know what this interval notation is and, um, and so that you can do this. So this one's going to say negative 4x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 11 or for parentheses x minus 1 is less than 4. All right, so you're going to solve these just like you would with any inequality. And so we solve these separately. And so I'm trying to get x by itself. And I want to get x by itself on the left-hand side. It'll make it easier for me if I can get that x on the left-hand side. So I'm going to start by moving my 3 over. Since it's connected by addition, I need to subtract it over. And so that leaves me with negative 4x is greater than or equal to 8. And then negative 4 and x are connected by multiplication, so I'll undo that by dividing by a negative 4. But if I divide by a negative number, I need to remember to flip that inequality sign the other way. So it's actually going to be x is less than or equal to negative 2. All right, now let's solve this one down. So we're going to distribute that 4, so we get 4x minus 4 is less than 4. 
need to add this 4 over, We're trying to isolate that x. So 4x is less than 8, and then I'll divide by 4. So x is less than 2. All right, so we solved it. We did the first part. Now we need to graph it. So we're going to graph this on a number line. And so I'm going to just make a number line here. And I'm going to plot. Remember, this is a number line. So if I say zeros here in the middle, the negative 2 would be to the left of it. And positive 2 would be over here to the right. All right and I'm going to do these in two different colors just to hopefully let it stand out a little bit more. So let's do this one. So x is less than or equal to negative 2. So since it has the equal to part, that means I'm going to have a closed circle there, meaning it includes negative 2. But we also, our, our solutions are all the things to the left, all the things that are less than negative 2. Right? And then on my other one, we're going to graph this just on the same number line. So I'm going to make this green graph. So at 2, I have a less than symbol, so it doesn't have the equal to part, so that means it's an open circle. And then I want all the stuff less than 2. Okay, so again, I want the stuff that is to the left of it. Okay. Now we got to go back to this. Right? We said it's an OR statement, and OR means we want all elements in both sets. So I want to make sure that everything is included in there. So that means I need to include everything that is in the orange graph and also the green graph. right? But notice that some of this, the, the part of the green graph and the orange graph are the same. Right? So those are, um, that's where the overlap is. So that would be the intersection, but we're looking for the union. So we want all elements. So we're saying we want all of that green. So we need to make sure we put this um, in here. So that's going to be, we're going to go, uh, if we wrote this in interval notation, we always start from left to right. So your smallest number. So it's going out to negative infinity and then up to two, but not including two. So we'll use a parenthesis, not a bracket. Right? And that, those elements, right, are the ones that are all of the elements in both sets. All right, so let's look at one other on here, just to give another example. So, whoops. All right, so if we have, again, we're going to have the same instructions, solve graph, and write your answer in interval no notation. So I have 9 parentheses x minus 8 minus 4 is less than negative 40 or 7x plus 6 is greater than x plus 12. All right, so again, let's just solve these down, trying to isolate x, and we want to get x by itself on the left-hand side. It will just make it easier for us um, to read inequalities that way. So if I distribute that 9, I get 9x minus 72 minus 4 is less than negative 40. All right, now I want to combine these like terms together. Notice that they're on the same side. So when they're on the same side, I just combine them together just like they are. So that means I'd have 9x minus 76 is less than negative 40. All right, but now I'm moving this. I'm trying to get x by itself, so I need to move that negative 76 over to the other side of the inequality. So I'm going to have to add that over. So that gives me 9x is less than 36. And then to get x by itself, we still need to divide by 9. So x is less than 4. All right. All right, now on this one, let's just keep solving it like we have. So I'm going to move my 
whole numbers to the right hand side and my x's to the left. It doesn't matter which way, you know, which one you do first. So let's do this. So if I have 7x is greater than x plus 6, and then I need to subtract this x so that I can get it together with the other x. And again, I'm trying to get those when I'm dealing with inequalities, get those on the left side of that inequality. So I get 6x is greater than 6. And if I divide by 6, I get x is greater than 1. All right, so again, so we've solved it. Now let's graph it. Okay, and so I've got, so 0 is going to be somewhere here. 1, 2, 3, 4 will be here. And so at 4, right, I've got x is less than 4. So I need to have an open circle there and then all the stuff to the left. And on this one, I've got x is greater than 1, so that means an open circle there, and everything to the right. Now, this is where it gets kind of tricky for people, because a lot of times people think, oh, it's the stuff in between here where they're overlapping. Well, that would be true if this was an AND statement but this is an OR statement. And remember with that, that OR statement, we said, oh yeah, we want the elements in both sets, right? All the elements, what, you know, what X's are going to work on this? Well, do you see that the, you, the orange one's going out to negative infinity, the green one's going out to positive infinity, so every single value there Right? Every single x is going to be part of our set this time because it's included in all of them. So on this one, right, we're going to have, since it's all real numbers, it's negative infinity to positive in infinity. Think about where do I see my graph showing up? Right? It doesn't matter that these guys are overlapping, right? but you just need to make sure that you see, oh yeah, every single value is going to be part of my solution this time. Okay, I hope that was helpful.